You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. A senseless shooting that led to the death of a 12-year-old boy could spark big changes for all young people in Atlanta. The latest on talks about a possible curfew. We may be starting off on the cool side with temperatures down into the 30s and some spots going to heat up nicely and then rain will be coming in later on tonight. All the details coming up. Another day of early voting starts just minutes from now. So far during the Senate runoff election, Georgia voters are breaking records. Ariana Manise has a look at the turnout. Long lines can be seen at polling locations all over Metro Atlanta as Georgia voters are eager to cast their ballot to decide who will represent them in the U.S. Senate. To mark the first state required period for early in person voting, more than 300,000 people hit the ballot box on Monday, exceeding the previous one day record of around 233,000 votes. Cobb County had the highest raw vote turnout according to Georgia election officials. Georgians have less than a week to vote in this runoff election. With this shortened time period and early voting ending on Friday, both sides say they plan to continue to rally voters to the polls. Election officials suggest to avoid those long lines that we're seeing to head to your polling location at least an hour around the time it first opens and close to when it closes. And on election day, election officials say on December 6th, they do expect a strong voter turnout. Back to you. All right, Ariana, big thank you to all the poll workers out there. Sticking with your 11 minutes of nonstop news, here are some other top headlines we're following. The FBI has now confirmed that remains found in a Georgia landfill belong to a missing toddler. The FBI bringing some closure to the case of 20-month-old Quentin Simon. The child disappeared from his home in Savannah nearly two months ago. Quentin's mother, Leilani Simon, is now in jail facing a murder charge. We now know the name of another teenager killed during a candlelight vigil, a shooting that happened in DeKalb County. Police say somebody shot 17-year-old Ian Haggerty along Flat Shoals Road on Sunday. A 16 and 11-year-old were also hurt. So far, police have not announced any arrests. Family and friends are searching for a father now missing for more than 24 hours. Nick Backhuber's wife last heard from him Sunday night. He was running some errands and sent her a text that he was stuck in traffic. They have a child at home and another on the way. Police are looking for Nick's 2005 white Toyota 4Runner. Just how long would you wait to get your hands on a Whataburger meal? Well, this was the line that was happening outside the Kennesaw Whataburger. We told you about the grand opening yesterday, and this is how the line's been ever since the restaurant opened at 11 a.m., winding around the building and down the street. Continuing your 11 minutes of nonstop news with a new push to enforce a stricter curfew for children and teens in Atlanta. City council members say the last straw was a shooting near Atlantic Station that left a 12 year old boy dead and five other young people hurt. Liza Lucas has more on that. Good morning. Atlanta City Council member Keisha Waits is proposing a 7 p.m. citywide curfew for youth 17 and under. Now this after the death of 12 year old Zion Charles on Saturday. The councilwoman says the curfew is meant to be a short term solution while city leaders look for a more permanent one. I think if anything, we can give Zion any gift, and that is to be urgent and to take some steps necessary to protect other young people. Now, this proposed legislation would also require locations that experience historical patterns of violence, multiple incidents, or homicides to add cameras into Atlanta Police Department's video network. Councilmember Waite says that would further support police. Now, we're going to continue to track these updates on this plan, including conversations about enforcement. The legislation will be proposed, we're told, at Monday's Atlanta City Council meeting. Thank you, Liza. You have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and now the Tuesday after Thanksgiving is called Travel Tuesday. Some airlines, hotels, and rental car companies are offering deals today, and you can see up to a 50% savings. Stick around. The Today Show will have more on how to get the most out of this huge shopping day for jet setters. And don't forget that today is also Giving Tuesday, a time when you are encouraged to give to a good cause. Organizations across the metro are holding events to give back to the community, and you can help out too. Head to 11alive.com for a full a list of ways to contribute. A great way to give back this season is by donating non-perishable food and hygiene items to our 40th annual Canathon. You can drop off your donations at any of our four locations this Friday. Sign up for a drop off time if you have a big load to bring us on 11alive.com slash Canathon. Team USA is gearing up for a high stakes match in the FIFA World Cup. NBC's Megan Fitzgerald reports from Doha on the winner take all game. 
Team USA just hours away from the all-important match against Iran. A win for the Americans mean they advance to the next round. If they don't, they're heading home. Meanwhile, the Iranian government continuing their call to FIFA for them to kick the Americans out of the World Cup. We're breaking it all down for you. Coming up on today. Megan, thank you. If you need a place to watch the match, United Atlanta hosting another watch party this afternoon at Fado Midtown at 2 p.m. Chesley. All right. Don't want you to overlook today. It's going to be a nice one out there if you have to get out and about, especially around the noon hour. We're looking at temperatures right at 60 degrees under mostly sunny skies. You will notice those clouds increase, especially around the 3 o'clock hour. Temperatures right at 66 degrees. We'll call it partly sunny skies. Southeast breeze at about 9 miles per hour. By 6, well, we could be seeing some showers begin to move into our far northwestern counties. We'll be down to 62 degrees under mostly cloudy skies and that heavy rain comes in tonight into tomorrow morning. W I N Woo! One Georgia Tech student is now a Wheel of Fortune winner. Dublin City Schools posted on its Facebook page congratulating their valedictorian Quincy Howard for his performance last night. His big prize was a red Mini Cooper plus, you know, nine, you know, $69,000. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Ooh. It's red, though. You got to throw that back. Oh! <laughs> He's awesome. Today's show is next. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Get him everybody. Get a purple one. <laughs>